Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. We offer a number of ways to help you with your journey here at Anxiety Coaches Podcast, and I hope you will take advantage of everything that we offer. Be sure to subscribe to this twice a week podcast. I'd also suggest visiting our website where you can sign up for our newsletter, you can listen to the 10-minute body scan meditation, and check out the group and one-on-one coaching options, along with the resources and more information on anxiety. Go to anxietycoachespodcast.com and check all that out today. In today's episode, I want to share with you some wise words I had in an email I got from my friend Steve Ozanich. He was on an earlier podcast, and I will have a link to that podcast in the show notes for you, or you can look it up. It will have his name, Steve Ozanich, in the title. I don't have the number right in front of me. And I I, I wanted to share with you uh, some of his wisdom. Uh, of course, he's talking about TMS, which is the mind-body syndrome, and that is the pain that, that doesn't have an organic or traumatic reason. And um, people are healing that by uh, understanding their own thoughts and what they're thinking about their pain and so forth. And um, Steve's book, in case you are interested in reading that, is The Great pain deception. Again, those links will be in the show notes. But I got an email and it uh, was talking about living in your head too much. So uh, although he's talking about TMS and Dr. Sarno's work, what we are also knowing from what Dr. Sarno's work was that he considered anxiety to be um, a part of TMS. So uh, we're all in kind of like the same family of our mind, our mind causing us to have these feelings, sensations, thoughts, and so forth. So um, let's see what it was that I was reading here that I wanted to share with you. Um, Living too much in your head. Steve went on to say here that the type T, this is a common TMSer, is an intellect. Thinking has replaced feeling for them. So they become thinkers, so they can't be hurt further by their emotions. Thinking has become their method of coping with fear, anxiety, anger, avoiding deep heartache. Steve says the brilliant Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung stated that nothing inhibits feeling like thinking. Thinking blocks the dreaded emotional experience And so it happens that people in pain are living their lives in their head. The body matters in life, so healing must include becoming more physical and living with less negative chatter. Well, if you have anxiety, you know what negative chatter is. It is really quite loud, and it is always seeming to be there. And if there isn't something new to think about, it's okay. We can ruminate. We can throw the same thoughts over and over and over again. I'll just read a little bit more here about what Steve was saying. Um, With each passing day, the TMSer, or I would say the person with anxiety, sees her dreams go by, living her life in her head, thinking versus doing. It's called what if thinking. What if? What if? What if? The sufferer gets caught in a procrastination loop by living each negative scenario in her mind, repeatedly running through all that could go wrong until she can eventually come to a rational reason as to never try. This is the opposite of mindfulness. A common thinking set that 
I've seen, Steve says, is, what if I can't heal? What if I can't be in a relationship because of my symptoms? What if I have a serious disease? What if I'm too psychologically messed up? What if I don't get the job because of my pain, or I would add my anxiety? So as we can see here that we're really talking about the same thing. It is this thinking, this living in the head and repeatedly running through what could go wrong. And we have this very same questions. I hear it all the time. What if I can't heal? What if I'm the one who can't get better? Or many people actually have been told that they can't heal, that they will just have to learn how to manage this anxiety for the rest of their life. Well, people have also been told, as you can tell when you hear Steve's um, podcast and my conversations with him and my reading of Dr. Sarno's work, people have been told by experts that they're never going to get over their pain either, and that they just need to learn to tolerate it, learn to medicate it, learn to cope with it, and maybe take, um, you know, some of these other surgeries and other therapies for it, but that it would, the chances, it's just like 50-50, maybe will, maybe won't help because they are not able to see the exact cause or the exact reasoning for the pain, just as we are not able to see what is really causing this anxiety. It's almost like it's become redundant. It's there and it's there and it's there. And of course, we have more stress in our life, which actually helps to feed it. It fuels the fire. And let's see, Steve goes on to say, I can only say from experience that the occurrence of these bad outcomes is extremely rare. They almost never, if ever, happen. But when told that these things are possible, the response is usually like Lloyd Christmas in Dumb or Dumber, so you saying there's a chance? Life has few guarantees, but one certainly is that if you believe you won't heal, then you won't heal. As Henry Ford said, quote, when you think you can or you think you can't, you're right, end quote. When people want to heal and they're finally ready to heal, they will begin to become more active with their body and less actively negative in their head. So I want to stop there because I want to talk about that. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And our mind is the problem here. We have stress from the outside and we are going to continue to have stress from the outside. But what is our interpretation of this stress or in the TMS case here, pain that Steve was talking about? What is, what is the good of interpreting it negatively? Now we may have been told, you know, negative things about it. And so we may be discouraged, but let's keep hope alive because the way that I have been seeing it is many, many, many people heal all kinds of things. And so you have to believe that if one can do it, you can also. Now that doesn't mean it happens overnight. It may mean many things that you have to let go of in your life that have been causing you to stay negative or to be in the way of your healing. But we want to do what he says here, active, uh, begin to become more active with your body and less actively negative in your head. And we know with anxiety too, that we become better off when we are active in our body. Most people do better when they have had some form of exercise added to their regime, unless you are one of the cases that have been over-exercising and exercise has become a new stress in your life. That's a different case. For most people, they are bogged down with life and responsibilities and to-dos, and they are not being active in their body. And also because they are afraid. Many are afraid of raising the heart rate because that makes them 
feel that they will trigger a panic attack or at least an anxiety full-blown day, and they can feel overwhelmed by that. And so it, you want to take it slowly, You want, but you want to do it. You want to move forward, putting one foot in front of the other, not continually backing away from the physical things that we can do for our body, the entryway that we can make out into the world and into life. This doesn't mean that you need to become a public speaker. It means that you need to do the things that you are yearning to do and that you have wanted to do. We have a big spectrum that, that all of us fall on between introvert and extrovert, and we don't all enjoy or seek the same types of things in our lives. But you only you know what you're being held back from. And that's where we become very honest with ourselves. It's where we become painfully honest with ourselves by saying, this is what I want, but my anxiety, my fear, my stress levels are holding me back from doing it. So where can we get some help with this? You want to talk to somebody about it? Fine. You need to be talking to somebody about it. And that can be your, if you're in a 12 step group, it can be your sponsor. It can be someone from your, you know, church, someone in the clergy. It can be your coach, your therapist, your friend. Many people have what we call spiritual friends where they talk about these things, each giving each other the time to do that. You could be in our group where you're bringing these things to the group and stating in the post your your where you're at and your issue and where it is that you feel you're being held back and get help from many people who can actually tell you what worked for them. And I can pipe in and give you my two cents also, if you care for that. So there's many things, but I think what is really helpful is for us to get it out of our head. Now, if you don't have anyone to talk to, even, you know, the problem when we start talking too close in our family is they already have a view of us. They have a very, um, too much history sometimes. So sometimes it's best to go outside of our family unit, not because we don't think they would be supportive, but because we need someone who has more of a neutral view of us and uh, maybe not over caring of us or that we're expecting a particular answer from them. So, but if you don't have anyone to talk to, and you're not going to join the group and you're not going to seek a spiritual friend or something to chat these things up with, you can take all of this to your journal. If you're a very private person and you would prefer to start by just putting it down on paper, the reason I want you to get it out of your head is because it looks different when you write it down. It it isn't, it doesn't sound the same when you read it back to yourself as it did when it was rolling around in your head. So I really encourage you to use uh, some pages in your journal to do that. If you are feeling that you are, are stuck and you do not have the way that you can find that you can become more active in your life. And that means not being held back by fear, by anxiety, by the stress in our life. We we don't want to close down. And it doesn't mean, like I said, you don't have to become, you know, you know, you don't have to go out and become a speaker and in front of thousands of people talking. But I know there may be something for some of you. This means walking to the corner to put a letter in the mailbox. And I want you to hear me because I know that you can change. For some of you, it means leaving your bedroom. For others, it means getting on a plane. We're all in different places, but the reality is it's the same thing holding us back. It is the fear. It is the thought. It is our mind. And so we really do not need to live with these what ifs. We don't need to think that we're the one that can't heal. All of that can change, and we want to get out of our heads and start moving in the world, whether that means painting, 
on a canvas or painting your bedroom wall. Do something, have some movement and a little less thinking. Change the scenarios in your head to visions of light and slow your negative mental clutter and chatter. And I'm telling you, one of the things I want to mention here, and we'll do a whole podcast on this, clutter in your physical life is also clutter in your mind. We carry that stuff around with us. So along with needing to move your physical body more, why not declutter? clean out a closet. I know some of you have been doing that. And I so know that some of you did it so well that you're actually living very uh, simplified lives now. So this is all possible. Not only do you start moving your body, but you get rid of your clutter. And when you get rid of your clutter, you get rid of some of the mind chatter because we carry that clutter around with us. So as you can see, it's like a domino effect when we just start moving out into the world and get more involved in your life. And you will be able to find that harmony, much more harmony in your life. And it will really, really begin to feel better. And your mood will lift and you will have less of those anxious what ifs that I read earlier, because you will be actually doing things and you won't be so afraid because you won't be living only in your head. You will have experiences, and each one of those experiences can be tucked away in your back pocket and remind yourself of those the next time you have one of those what-ifs pop up. That's it for today's episode. And before I read today's quote, I want to remind you that if you want more than what's offered here and more personal guidance, you might be ready for our group coaching membership program. It's a deeper dive into what you learn here on these episodes. Each month, you'll receive two anxiety clearing skill sheets sent in email. You'll also receive two live group coaching calls, which are recorded in case you can't attend. Those will help guide you through your challenges. And there's also a secret Facebook group for coach and community support every day, all month long. So if you're ready for more, go to anxietycoachespodcast.com slash group dash coaching and join today. I'd love to see you in the group. And now for today's quote. Healing may not be so much about getting better as about letting go of everything that isn't you. All the expectations, all the beliefs, and becoming who you are. And that's from Rachel Naomi Remen. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.